Thank you, everyone. So today we've been talking about movement building. We've been talking about what we need to do to make society more just. And I wanted to recognize how in an ideal situation, social movements, right, will be uh, solidified into institutions. So I want to thank the different roles that people here have played, uh, everyone from the, the chancellor to uh, we have chairs of departments who have collaborated with us, who send interns to the George White, to the Labor Ed Center, who uh, then we peer with very different unions across the, the region to make a difference. So I wanna really appreciate that interconnectedness and leadership that, that really uh, helps us make the impact that is in the mission of UMass Dartmouth, right? That it says in our mission that we wanna promote regional transformation and we can only do that through working together, right? And having students like uh, Daniel who was just taking pictures here do things like uh, take pictures at a, at a picket line and share it and write articles, right? And learn, learn while they're making a difference for our community struggles, right? While uh, other examples are Gabe who uh, you might have seen on our recently launched TikTok who you know, I met because they were trying to organize in their workplace in Dartmouth down the, down the road. Or Shantae, who um, also was on TikTok, who she is wants to become a nurse, so she's been partnering with the MNA to, to work with them, right? But we can only do this by building trust, by building our relationships, and, and really recognizing that we need to work on social issues and organizing now. The Labor Ed Center, I'm privileged to work there. It was my political home when I was an undergrad, right? Um, when I was here and you're reading about social problems and this was a place where I could go and talk to Jose uh, and, and talk to Kim Wilson and figure out what we were doing about social problems, right? And apply that classroom knowledge to action and to research that made a difference and recognizing the knowledge that is in our communities and is in, through direct experience. So I wanna thank everyone that sponsored here, that bought tables, and even beyond that, the work that you do, do every day that I know is not easy, it's challenging, but we need to support each other, encourage each other to keep it up. I wanted to start with a little bit about uh, our some of the activities in the last year. Uh, one includes uh, the labor mural that you might have seen was just gifted. And I wanted to make sure folks knew the reason why we didn't give Steve Tolman an award was because he already, he already got our Arnold M. Dubin Award. <laughs> so in case you were wondering about, uh, you know, he, he got that, but he also got this mural that, um, that integrates um, labor history, abolitionist history, and I think it's a powerful metaphor for the work that we're trying to do today. That folks here in this room, I know Jerry Fishbein, there are others, please raise your hand, that were part of making this mural happen the first time. It highlights local labor leaders, uh, folks that led strikes, that were deported sometimes because of their organizing and militancy. Um, and obviously, uh, Frederick Douglass it has Jerry Fishbein's son is, is in one of these pictures. So it tells the story of our connectedness to these struggles for justice. But like everything, it needs to be renewed. And through our, our work together, uh, Lydia Stein came. Um, if you could show, we want to show also, we have uh, Jim Snow, who you just heard from who's a, a member, retired member of local 691 IUPAT, which is the Painters Union, and also T Tony Hernandez, retired organizer with DC 35 IUPAT. So they spent time after the mural was restored, painting it to make sure it stays there. And I, I think it is, you know, not just a metaphor, but a reality, right? That we have people in this room that were part of, like Dan Georgiana, who helped found the faculty union here, right? But it's all up to all of us to renew, refresh, to restore each other, to make sure we continue in the struggle. So 
I'm very honored to also share as part of our story an important part of our program that's been pivotal to so many lives in our community. So I'm, I'm really honored to, to share. This is the uh, Richard M. Fontaine Memorial Award. And should, just to give you a little information about Fonterra, he was the dean and faculty of SMU, which was a precursor to UMass Dartmouth. And for folks that are here for the first time, we came out of the textile industry, right? We came out of people learning how to learn textiles, right? And we served that industry but we also came out of the labor movement demanding, yes, bread and roses. We want to have organized and dignity in our workplace, but we also want some place where, you know, we, if, even if we can't, our children can attend, right? And make a decision that, about their lives um, to, to be able to read poetry, to study diff different occupations, right? And the labor movement, just for folks that are here the first time, was pivotal at recognizing that working class people deserve an institution in Southeastern Mass. And the Labor Ed Center has been pivotal. People like Jim Snow, uh, you know, the labor movement has been pivotal to that and, and we should not forget that. So Richard Fonterra, he was an educator, a leader, and a persistent advocate for civil liberties and democracy in education. He envisioned the university as both a community in itself and a part of the larger community. It was that vision that helped bring the Labor Education Center to life. The Fonterra Memorial Award honors individuals who have made a commitment to education and the ideals of democracy and social justice. So we're gonna bring up shortly who's getting that award, which is extremely uh, it's extremely deserved. But I also wanted to mention that, you know, we've been talking about Arnold Dubin, and I wanted to recognize Steve Dubin, who's Arnold Dubin's son, and Isaac, uh, if you could stand. <laughs> we're, we're fortunate to have their support we, we've been able to do many projects that we wouldn't have been able to. Uh, for example, the podcast that Jim mentioned, um, Steve is in that profession and he's been able to, to volunteer time to help us launch that during the pandemic to really amplify voices in our area. So uh, without further ado, I, I wanna um, share this, this next award. I wanna share some words from Kim Wilson who um, you heard from earlier, who has had the, the privilege of working with uh, Lisa Jockham um, longer than I have, but I have to say that I've seen um, the, the culture that she's created in the workplace, the way she has modeled how you treat students and staff, the way she encouraged her staff to become members of our union, right? The way she defends students and workers, and, and provides uh, the education that it helps students be able to actually uh, defend their rights, organize, right? Um, to often uh, come out of the fear and the shadows of our society that teaches people if you don't have papers, if you can't speak English, that you don't belong, right? Um, so giving people the skills, supporting, people who are working often, you know, in fish houses, in, uh, in construction, and taking the time uh, to take that, to learn English. Um, it takes special people to really be able to recognize how important that is and to recognize that, that education really shouldn't be a privilege and seeing how hard people uh, work for it is really a privilege. But Kim has some words for, for Lisa that I wanted to share. So this is from Kim Wilson. Uh, Lisa's leadership of the Workers' Education Program has grown the program exponentially. It now reaches more and more students, profoundly changing their lives. 
Your efforts to build the program, retaining union staff along the way, have made this among the very best adult education programs in the state. More than anything, Lisa, your devotion to the most easily exploited workers in our community deserves our universal respect. 